Hi guys, thank you for viewing, I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today my video is called How Not to React. Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is work out what is the definition of a reaction. So generally, a reaction is totally different to responding. Those two words, reacting and responding. If we look at psychology, they virtually say that a reaction is an action where somebody else has reacted. So simple explanation here, someone comes at you screaming, they're full of abuse. First thing we do is react by mirroring those same actions back at the other person. So generally, if you've got a screamer, they're screaming their head off. This person is reacting. Their actions are reflecting the actions. So they generally start screaming and the abuse builds, yes? When we respond in psychology, it means that we're using logic, that we're using our critical thinking, and that we're actually analyzing or assessing the situation. So then we come to a conclusion based on facts and evidence where we demonstrate that we do not have an emotional attachment to what has happened. Okay? Because reacting is all about emotions. This person, the screamer, they're pretty emotive, right? They've got all this emotion of it could be anger, could be fear, it could be um, some sort of impatience where they're so angry about something. So this other person picks up on that emotion and they reflect or re-act that same stuff back at them, okay? So <clears throat> how do we not react? It's actually quite simple but it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of work on our own behalf to look inside ourselves and to analyze our own behaviors to see if this is something that we're doing. So I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios today about things that have just happened to me in the last week where I had the option to react or respond. <clears throat> so the first one, only yesterday, I live in what's called the most colourful street in my suburb. Now, if you know what the word colourful means, it's nothing to do with skin colour, race or religion. It means that there is a lot of police action, people known to police in my street. So yesterday, I'm sitting out the back having a chat with, on the phone. And there's a knock at my front door from one of these colourful neighbours. She's. I answered the door, I opened it up and I said, what's going on? And she's really upset. She said, my God, my toilet's overflowed, my whole house is full of water. Now, instantly, I said, I'll come over and help. So I've run over and sure enough, the whole house is about three inches deep of water. First thing that went through my head was, oh my God, there's electricity cables. There's um, power points. So I said to her, have you turned off the power? She said, no. So I've run around the side and I've switched off every switch on the mains because I'm not an electrician. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I just made sure everything was off. Then I've come inside and I said, okay, show me what's happening. She took me into her bathroom and there's a little pipe that leads to the toilet, which is the water coming in to fill up the cistern. And there was a hole in it. And I swear water was going four foot high in the, in the bathroom. It was like a volcano of water <laughs> gushing out of her toilet. And I was thinking, oh my God, we've got to turn off the water. I don't know how to do that. I'm not a plumber. I'm not an electrician. I don't know what to do. So I thought, I'll ring another neighbour who's a male, see if he knows what to do. So I've run home and I grabbed two things 
do you think? What do you think I grabbed? One was my phone and the other was my big industrial broom. So as I'm going back over to the house, I'm on the phone to this other neighbour who I knew was home. <clears throat> and I said, darling, um, can you come out and turn off the mains? So he's come out <coughs> and he turned off the water supply. Then he went home. So then the occupier of this house and I, we spent 45 minutes sweeping water out of her house. Um, I was at the front door and she was up near the bathroom sweeping. So it was all like coming down like a tide. And I'm sweeping all this water out of her house, causing a flood going down her driveway. <laughs> I reckon there would have been about 500 litres of water that went down the street yesterday. So when we got it to the point where you really couldn't sweep it anymore, it was now a job for towels and other things. I said, look, I've got to go because I've got to go and get my daughter from school. So I went and got in the car, making sure that she was all right. And I sat back and I assessed what had happened. And I thought, do I like those neighbours? They're not friends of mine. I don't generally agree with their behaviours, but I allow them to be who they are, for they are human. They deserve a right to live. Exactly right, yes. Please agree with that. And then I th had this instant epiphany, and I thought, was there a moment... <clears throat> when I saw her at the door, was there an instant where I thought, oh my God, don't get involved? Was there a thought where I thought, don't go? Was there a thought where I said to myself, oh my God, why would I help you? Judging her for who she was. And I sat there as I'm driving to school and I thought, I didn't even flinch. It was instantaneous where I said, I'm coming over to help. There was no negative at all with my intentions. Pardon me. Because I've just said the psychology of this. Reacting is when we use the same emotions that someone else is causing to us. But responding is when we use analysing the critical thinking. But in spirituality, reacting is actually very negative. Responding, on the other hand, is very positive. When we respond to people, it's very positive in the universal energies. It actually is raising up our vibrations so we're creating good. Now, I did give myself a little pat on the back last night because I'm the first to actually say it. When we do a good job, we always give ourselves that recognition. It doesn't matter who else we tell it to. But as long as we say to you ourselves, you know what, Linda, I am so proud that you went and helped her yesterday. She was distressed. She was upset. She was scared. And you went over and helped her. So you calmed her down. You gave her that comfort, that support, regardless of who she was. So I gave myself that little heads up yesterday because that's how we build our self-pride. That's how we acknowledge our self-confidence. That's also how we realize that we love ourselves for the actions that we do to others. So I know yesterday was a test for me. That was a test where I was put into that situation because why did she come to my house? That is a very big, important question. We live in the middle of a street and there's probably 10 other houses that she could have run to. Why mine when we don't even really know each other that well? Why was I chosen to be the one to help her yesterday? Hmm. So I was put into that situation like a synchronicity where I was being tested. I was given an opportunity to recognize if I was learning a valuable lesson yesterday. 
not in how to react where I would have judged her, where I would have criticised and said, oh, you're below me. There was none of that yesterday. It was an instant, I'm there for you. There was nothing where I reacted to what they've done in the past. So, second situation. I was driving behind this man last week. He was a driver in a vehicle and I was on the road behind him. It was two lanes and we were both in the right lane. And this man was swerving erratically, hitting the gutter on the other side of the road and then mounting the footpath in front of me. Did I judge him? Did I accuse him? I actually sat there and I thought, my God, wonder if he's having a medical emergency. I actually thought he may have been having a heart attack or a stroke. So we got up to the red light and I went into the left lane next to him because here in, in Australia the left lane's a slow lane. I came up beside him and I put my window down and I looked at this old man in the vehicle and straight away I was filled with a compassionate understanding that this man wasn't capable of driving this day it was a very apparent by his looks so I, I made a noise and he put his window down and I said honey are you okay now I used to work in aged care and I've also done disability work in my past voluntary work that I've done I use words like honey darling sweetheart because that builds trust in the other person and it shows that you're not only trusting but you're compassionate and that you're not a threat to someone. I didn't say, hey, asshole. I didn't say that. What are you doing? I didn't judge. I didn't accuse him. I didn't react to his behavior. So his behavior became mine through that reflection or reaction. I said, honey, are you okay? And he said, oh, I'm not feeling very well. I've just been to the doctor's. And I said, how far do you have to drive home? And he said, I'm just up at the next street. I turn right. I'm just there. And I said, well, do you mind if I follow you? So he, he pulled up in a street not far from mine. And as he got out of the car, he was wobbly. And I said, darling, who's home with you? That was my first thought. Who's home with you in case something was wrong? He said, oh, my wife's inside. And I said, okay. Do you mind if I make sure she's, she is here? So he opened the door and she came out. And I said, look, just be aware. He's not feeling very well. So she took him inside. Do I care how that story ended? Not really. Because it's their life to lead. But why did I get involved? Because it shows that I'm a caring and understanding person. I didn't attack I didn't abuse. I didn't react to his behavior. I analyzed it through critical thinking, thinking of all the possibilities like we do when we analyze something, collecting data and it could be that option, that option, that option. He could have been a drunk driver, but I doubt he was only because of the way he was talking. So we don't generally have to react guys that's the main message today we don't have to judge or instantly assume why someone else is doing something else because all we do when we react is that we're showing our own negative behaviors let's go there social media let's go instagram snapchat facebook Telegram, if you're on there, all these other places. How often do we see comments now where some person who's never even met the other attacks them for something that they've posted? They are showing that they are reacting to their own issues. They're reacting to their own issues. It shows that they've been triggered so far to the point where they have to comment or make a complaint 
or send abusive emails or phone calls or whatever else these people do. But it shows that the real issue is within them. So when people react, it's generally negative. But when people respond, it's usually positive. So if you put out a post and you say, oh my God, I just made this beautiful dinner, nom nom nom. Remember those videos from a few years ago? The nom 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 videos? How many people actually said the love heart or the care or the ha 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 photos? Because they're reflecting that same energy. So they're actually reacting. And that's why MJoys are a reaction. Because you're in that same emotive state. So what that actually means is that you're at the same frequency as the person who posted that comment. So when somebody says something in their posts and someone attacks them, that actually means that that person, the commenter, is actually in a lower vibrational state. They're more negative, especially if they're attacking, harassing, abusing, etc., to the point where they get reported to Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, or whoever else you're on, okay? So, who ultimately do we blame? Right now on the planet, we're blaming so many people who aren't really at fault. Let's go there. There has always been misinformation. Way back in history, there's always been the naysayer. There's always been the sarcastic abuse. There has always been the talking behind your back and the gossips. There has always been misinformation spread from one to another. But now, in this weirdness, it's prevalent. There is so much information that has been misconstrued and reported incorrectly that who do we trust ultimately? Who do we trust? So trust is one of these psychological issues where if you're a trusting person, you are generally got a higher vibration. And if you don't trust somebody, then that's when you start getting fearful. You start getting scared. You start reacting to what is put out there. Hence why there's so many angry and bitter people on the planet right now. You look at any city on the planet, people are angry because they don't know what to trust. So it's when we use reaction as opposed to responding. When we respond, we sit there and we use critical thinking, we analyze, we research. And that's why now these keyboard warriors that are out there, they're coming out with so much good stuff because there's so many lies through that misinformation of the gossiping and the backhanded deals and all the other behind your back stuff that's going on at the moment. So why do we blame someone else? when it's not really their fault because it shows what we hold on the inside if we blame others so quickly it actually represents that we're actually blaming ourselves instead of that other person that driver the other day if I was going to attack and abuse him what the hell do you think you're doing that only shows a representation or a reflex re-presentation, representation is a re, or a reflection of my reaction of how I am actually feeling. So next time you go in to attack somebody, next time you go in to abuse a neighbour, Next time that you're going to say anything negative or detrimental about somebody else, think, is this really about the other person? Or is this something within me that I have an issue with? 
Because it's when we go to that depth of our own psyche and we say to ourselves, you know what, Linda, you're right. I blame everything that's going on and I'm taking it out on all these people around me. Is it fair right now to attack the checkout chick at the local grocery shops? Some would call her the cashier. If you're in America, the cashier at your local grocery shop. Is it fair to attack her and tell her how angry you are with what the government is doing at this point? She's just trying to do her best in a given situation to make money to pay her bills and to put food on her table. So what's the purpose of reacting to her when there's nothing she can do about this? She can't change what's happening all over the world. So why put your energy into creating that negativity ball that you're inflicting onto her? Because then she will likely create her own negativity ball where she goes home to her family that night I got attacked today oh this person said all this bad stuff about me so she's creating generating all that energy that's now reflecting reacting to her own family is that fair to create that you know the world needs a wake-up call the world absolutely needs a wake-up call stop attacking people stop being offended by what your politicians are doing because they're the puppets they're only being told what to say on the media they're not the root cause of what's going on so if you do get angry about all this stuff go and do your own research And don't attack the persons who are out there trying to get all this misinformation cleared up so the truth comes out. Because at the end of the day, only those who stand up are the ones who everybody else will most likely not thank when something good comes in the future. Pardon me. I want to tell you a story. Remember I said that there were three stories? The last one I want to talk about today is Noah. Remember Noah? He was just a man. He had a wife. Had some kids. And God spoke to him one day. And God said, I am so angry. Now, why do you think God was angry? Because everyone was offended. Everyone was being negative. Everyone was being spiteful. Everyone was aggressive and abusive, harassing everybody else. Noah. Did he react to all those insults, abuse and attacks that he was getting? No. He didn't. He responded. He sat there and analysed. And at the end of the day, he said to himself, do I want to be the reflection of those other people? No, he didn't. He wanted to be a good, trusting, honest man. He didn't want to backstab, talk about others behind their back or gossip about them. He probably did have a little chat or two to those animals that were coming on. I could imagine the conversations that he had, but he did not allow their energy to take over who he was, correct? So when we react, we allow the other person or entity's energy to not only fill us so we become them, it also makes us be that other person. This is pure spiritualism 101. Reflection. So have a look at who you associate with, guys. Who do you talk with? Now, note I just said with, because talking with is different to talking to someone. 
Who do you talk with? And what are they saying? Because generally we're only reacting to what they've told us because our energies are aligned. So today is a wake up call, guys. The world is going down the toilet. <clears throat> do you want to be in that flush or do you want to be sitting on the bowl looking to the sky and saying thank you so much for allowing me to realize who I am thank you so much for allowing me to react instead of responding thank you so much for giving me the opportunity where I was tested to see if I was going to lower myself to the vibrational energy frequencies of everyone else around me or was I going to pick myself up showing my own self-worth, my own self-value and most of all my own self-love where I could actually look at these people in the face and say I do not judge or accuse you for I understand your situation, you're scared, you've got fears, you don't know who to trust. So let's allow this to unfold where we do not get energetically attached to it through that reflection which is a reaction and then we sit there at the end of the day with our heads high knowing that we did the best job we could do given the situation that we're in. We don't have to bring everybody else down to our standards. We really don't. So get to the real core of what's going on within you guys. Because at the end of the day when we judge and we accuse somebody else, we're actually accusing ourselves of something that we don't want to face within ourselves. So we see it in someone else through that reflection, which is a reaction. We take it out on them when the only person that we should be analyzing, the only person that we should be accusing, the only person that we should be judging is ourselves. Do I want to be the same person tomorrow who I was yesterday? And if the answer is no, this is your wake-up call to do something about it. Stop your bickering. Stop your accusations. Stop your judging people. Stop attacking people. And say to yourself, if I'm attacking them, I am really attacking myself for my situation. And what am I doing about that? Because that's how we stand firm. That's how we get our own inner strength. That is how we build our own self-confidence to make tomorrow a better day than it was yesterday. We don't pay attention to what's going on because the more we put energy into what other people do, the more we become it. So the video today was going to be how to create the reality we want through that reflection in our thoughts. But I know now by that instance yesterday where I gave that woman no hesitation to help her. I passed a test and I'm damn proud that I helped her out. How many of you can seriously sit there and say, oh my God, Linda's boasting. Because I'm not boasting. I am giving you the opportunity to reflect of what I am. The more negative you put out there on social media, the more you're creating that negativity within yourself. And how dare you say that you're a religious person if you do that? How dare you say you're a spiritual person if you do these actions? How dare you say, I'm going to criticize this person, I'm going to attack them on social media, and I'm going to go home and say, oh yes, I'm such a good person, I'm spiritual, I'm religious. What a hypocrite. So at the end of the day, wake up to yourself, guys, because I'd say 9 out of 10 people on the planet right now are hypocrites. 9 out of 10 are hypocrites on this planet. And it's now the time to work out what we are doing 
Because the more we allow these people in authority to do what they're doing, the more they come into us and we attach to that energy and we create it for them. So we shut it down. We shut it down. We don't react. We respond. We respond. And many times, guys, the best response is silence. If someone attacks you, don't reply. Because you're not getting into that energetic frequency that they are trying to inflict on you. You let them decide for themselves under free will if they want to be a nasty, critical, sarcastic, gossiper, abuser, attacker. Do you want to be one of those? Because I'd say at this point on the planet, nine out of ten people are. And look what happened to Noah. There is coming a time, guys. All those people are going to be judged. And it's not by some foundation or government body. It is from the universe. And the word that I call that, judgment, is karma. It's about to bite a lot of people. It may not come instantaneously. It may not come in your life review, because hello, I've seen my life review. It may come out in six lifetimes later. But what is happening right now? I dare to say the words... But she's telling me, say the words, Linda. You know my girl that's always with me? She's she's virtually going, tell the words, Linda. Divine retribution. Look it up. Because it's coming. I am a psychic medium. I am an end of year. I have this woman who gives me messages. I know she's an angel because I've seen her many times. I've also seen angels in my house with wings. Six people saw them one night. There was wings in my house from angels. I know they're on my side here. They want this message out there. So which side of the fence are you going to, guys? Because very soon that fence will no longer be there. Do I want to harm or hurt anybody on the planet? Absolutely not. It makes me cry. Friday night I had the worst crying fit I've ever had out the backside of my house. I was looking at <clears throat> the sky like I do every night at 8.30. I go outside and have a chamomile tea and I talk to God. And I said, sorry, I am so sorry. Please forgive me for anything in my life I've ever done. Give me the opportunities to see what the errors of my ways are so I can put myself into knowing that I am more compassionate, understanding and forgiving. Please allow me to walk in your shadows for I want to be like you. And look what happened yesterday. Look at that driver. So they have put me in opportunities to show what I can be. It's time for me now to wake up the rest of you. I hope and pray that you listen to my words. For I stayed in heaven for about five years. This world here is a hell at this point for so many. So don't judge others. Don't accuse others. Allow them to be who they are. For we are all scared and we're all frightful. We don't know who to trust. So instead of attacking someone, look at what they've said and say, could this be real? And analyze it and react in a positive way so it becomes a response. 
And if you've got nothing good to say about anybody else, keep it to yourself because nobody else wants your negativity. At the end of the day, guys, where do you want to be on the fence? Positive or negative? Because the decision is coming fast. It's a warning. I'm hearing it. You know, people ask me all the times about what happened when I died. What did I get told about the future? She told me I'd work with the police for 10 years. I did. She told me I'd be a first aid trainer for two years. I did. She told me the date to conceive my daughter. Thank God I remembered the date because now I've got Tashi. <clears throat> she told me what's coming in two years. I know what's coming in 2023. I hope I'm wrong. Because it's those making foolish indecisions who are reacting and trusting the wrong people. They're about to regret their thoughts and actions. So try and stay positive, guys. Raise your vibration if you want to be a better person. It's now time to stand proud and swear it from your inside out. Like a beam of electricity coming out of you. I want to be free. I want to be loved. I want to be acknowledged, recognized and rewarded. And the only person who can ever give us those compensations is ourselves. It all starts in here. Hope you have a good day, guys. I need a coffee. If you like this, please like it. If you've got a comment, please put it below. I respond to a lot of my comments. Email me at linda at lindaray.info. I can handle the truth, good or bad. If you want to attack me, have a look at why you got offended. Why did you have to react? I think I've said enough. So on that note, please know I love you all. I want the best for everybody on the planet. At the end of the day, we all deserve the best, right? For we are all equal, and ultimately we are all one. So have a good day, guys. Talk soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.